In the fifth and final module of this program, we will focus on the treatment of infants with surfactant deficiency. After completion of this module, participants will be able to discuss the indications, precautions, and contraindications for treatment of respiratory distress syndrome, as well as the therapeutic options available. Let's return to the case presented in Module 4. As a reminder, this is a case of a 25-week preterm infant delivered for an abnormal fetal heart tracing. In the delivery room, the infant requires positive pressure ventilation and is noted to subsequently have increased work of breathing, increased FiO2 requirement, and reticular granular pattern, air bronchograms, and low lung volumes on chest x-ray. You summarize your thoughts to the team and suggest that the infant has classic signs of respiratory distress syndrome. What can we do to treat an infant with respiratory distress syndrome? Over the next several slides, we will discuss the treatment options we have available to prevent or treat RDS. The steroid formulations of betamethasone and dexamethasone when administered to expectant mothers before a preterm delivery result in significant benefit to the neonate by helping with maturation of various organ systems. For the respiratory system, antenatal steroids trigger a synthesis of RNA that codes for proteins involved in the synthesis of phospholipids, enhancing surfactant production. A recent Cochrane review on antenatal steroid administration demonstrated that, with antenatal steroid administration, there was a decrease in moderate or severe RDS and need for respiratory support, decreased neonatal death, decreased ICU admission, as well as decreased infection in the first 48 hours of life. Ventilatory strategies for RDS must be tailored based on the severity of patient illness. In moderate to severe RDS, it is necessary to deliver pressure to keep the lungs inflated and to prevent atelectasis and further collapse. Strategies to achieve this goal include ventilation with conventional or high-frequency ventilators, in addition to non-invasive strategies such as nasal intermittent positive pressure ventilation or CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure. The goal of all of these strategies is to maintain FRC or functional residual capacity of the lung to prevent lung collapse. The functional residual capacity or FRC of the lung is demonstrated in the red box. It is the volume left in the lung after tidal volume has been exhaled. The larger the FRC, the easier it is for alveoli to expand with the next inhalation. Exogenous surfactant has been available as a treatment for RDS since 1990. The use of exogenous surfactant decreases RDS complications such as pneumothorax and RDS-associated mortality by up to 65% and 40% respectively. Exogenous surfactant can be either synthetic or derived from animals. At present, surfactant can only be administered to an intubated infant. Animal-derived surfactants such as baractant, calfactant, and poractant are derived from bovine and porcine sources and all contain varying degrees of surfactant protein B and C as well as phospholipids. Synthetic surfactants can be protein free such as colfocerol or contain proteins that are meant to mimic proteins found in lungs as is in the case of leucinactin. Both animal derived and surf synthetic surfactant have been demonstrated to treat respiratory disease distress syndrome effectively. This table shows a comparison of the various formulations, their composition, and suggested dose. Please pause the recording and compare and contrast the different types of surfactant commercially available. To define more specifically, prophylactic surfactant administration is surfactant given down an endotracheal tube of an infant at risk for RDS shortly after initial resuscitation. In contrast, rescue surfactant is given to an infant after RDS is diagnosed, which could occur shortly after birth or several hours later. Although clinical trials have demonstrated that both types are effective, there is evidence to suggest greater efficacy with the animal-derived surfactant products. There is no difference in RDS, oxygen requirement at 28 days of life, and BPD. However, lower pneumo risk of pneumothoraces with animal-derived surfactants has been demonstrated in a 2015 Cochrane review. The same Cochrane review also found an, a decreased risk of mortality with animal-derived versus synthetic surfactant. This slide details the recommendations of the American Academy of Pediatrics Committee of on the fetus of the newborn for its surfactant administration. The committee reviewed evidence and determined that there is a strong recommendation to administer surfactant to infants born at less than 30 weeks gestational age who require mechanical ventilation. Providers may consider selective surfactant administration in infants receiving CPAP after birth as an alternative to routine intubation and surfactant and prophylactic surfactant administration. 
Finally, practitioners can consider rescue surfactant administration in infants with hypoxic respiratory failure in the setting of secondary surfactant deficiency in cases such as meconium aspiration or sepsis and pneumonia. As per the recent update of the American Academy of Pediatrics Surfactant Administration Guidelines in 2014, systematic reviews of randomized controlled trials continue to demonstrate that surfactant administration, either animal-derived or synthetic formulations, in preterm infants with RDS reduces mortality, pulmonary air leak, as in the case with pneumothoraces and pulmonary interstitial emphysema, and the risk of chronic lung disease or death at 28 days of life, as demonstrated in the Table 1 above. However, these benefits are not evident in all patients, particularly in those receiving non-invasive ventilatory support. So in summary, research has produced several options for treating surfactant deficiency and improving survival outcomes in preterm infants. Multiple formulations of surfactant are available with a review suggesting improved efficacy and decreased mortality in animal-derived surfactant versus synthetic surfactant. Per the American Academy of Pediatrics clinical report in 2014, preterm infants born less than 30 weeks gestation who require mechanical ventilation due to RDS should be given surfactant after an initial period of stabilization. Using CPAP immediately after birth with selective surfactant administration can be an alternative to routine intubation with early prophylactic surfactant administration. This concludes Module 5 and the program on surfactant. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.